Who am I? My name is Gary Hales. How would I describe myself? Uh, very passionate, very enthusiastic, uh, an all or nothing kind of person. Tend not to do things by half measures. And uh, I'm an actor by trade. I also am a funeral celebrant. And I have the privilege of being the GCO of the UK Garrison, which I've now been doing for uh, a lot of years. And I love it. I joined the UK Garrison in 19, no, 19, well, I'll show my age, 2008. Uh, and I was, and this is genuine, uh, at that point on the forum, there were, uh, every member was listed in order of joining. And I was genuinely the 501st member of the UK Garrison, um, which I always kind of thought was cool. Uh, uh, Jamie Hicks, some of whom will remember, hasn't been around for a little while, but some of whom will remember, was number 500 and he joined about an hour before me. Uh, and we always used to, it was quite funny. Uh, the UK Garrison was an independent club uh, before it became a part of the 501st. So as an independent club, it had established its own protocols, rules, ways of doing things. Uh, the 501st developed in the US, we developed in the UK. Albin Johnson and Graham Campbell, Graham Campbell being the person who really is the father of the UKG, if you like, is the best way, and Albin being uh, one of the fathers of the 501st, there are actually two people, there's him and someone else whose name escapes me at the moment, I do apologise. Uh, Albin, I believe, reached out to Graham. That is how the UK garrison became a, a part of the 501st and it worked and does work and hopefully will remain to work really well uh, you know the 501st is a worldwide organization so it's less intimate than than the garrisons shall we say it's an umbrella across all of the units across the world and i say units because there are squads there are outposts and various other different you know as well as garrisons that um, all run independently under the same basic set of rules with the same basic set of principles and all without question with the same idea and that is bad guys doing good. We, we get into costume, we have fun and we do it because we want to raise money for charity, help out in our local communities or just quite simply put smiles on people's faces. Um, I have, um, I have Stormtrooper, I have an officer, type pilot, crewman, men in black costume. I have a, two Batman costumes. Uh, I'm working on a Lobot costume, which I've been working on for some time. I have an Imperial gunner. Uh, the great thing about the gunner, the type pilot and the crewman is they are a very, uh, the same base costume. And then it's just accessorizing, if you like, the gunner helmet, and, you know, the tie pilot helmet, et cetera, et cetera. It just changes per accessories to make it, a, a, you know, it's almost like three costumes in one. And you can actually do more than that, to be honest. I think that's it. Oh, no, I've got Judge as well, Judge, uh, from the later 3D Judge Dread movie, which I love doing. That's great fun. I haven't done it for a while, but it's a lot of fun, especially if you get two or three. They're like Stormtroopers only, I don't know, maybe a little bit more kind of, I don't want to say aggressive, but a bit more kind of tough, should we say. I have a Blake 7 Federation Trooper, and there are four of us in the garrison, and we we regularly get together and do a couple of events a year as Blake 7 Troopers. The love for what is a British, old British sci-fi TV show, uh, and if you haven't watched it, you should, it is brilliant. Uh, it's dated because, you know, anything's made in the 70s, particularly it was BBC, but it's such a great show. I've been a Batman fan since I was a very, very uh, little boy. Uh, and I know I'm opening floodgates there for all sorts of jokes. I actually have a photograph uh, and that was taken when, as you can see, when I was in my cop. I've just been a Batman fan since I was a kid. Absolutely. I watched the Adam West show over and over when, whenever it was on in the days before videos. I kind of, I was just a massive fan of the comic books. I was a massive fan of the TV show. It's almost like Batman grew up with me in that as a kid, the whole Batman stuff was quite 
much more childlike and much more aimed at children. And as I grew up, a lot of the Batman stuff became very adult with the, the sort of late Neil Adams stuff, Frank Miller and all of that kind of the Dark Knight Returns, the killing joke. Uh, and comics became more adult based uh, or seemed to. I don't know if that's just me being conceited and thinking it was all sort of, you know, or, but it seemed to happen in, as I was growing up, comic books grew up as well and changed. Uh, and then in 1989, uh, the hype for the Batman movie with Michael Keaton, Jack Nicholson, Kim Basinger came out and I actually was so excited. I flew to New York to see it because that was back in the days where if something was shown in the States, it would be two or three months before it ever came over here. So I flew over, I had a cousin who lived in New York at the time, still does. Uh, flew over and stayed with him. He thought I was coming to see him. I was actually going over to see the movie. Sorry if you're watching this. And we landed and I'll, it was pretty much the first thing I did that when I got up the next morning. I saw it the day after it came out. I couldn't get a flight for the first night, which is really annoying because I, I could have got tickets to see it on the first night. I just couldn't get there. And I spent two weeks in New York experiencing American Batmania, which was phenomenal. It was amazing. Uh, for a Bat fan, and I, I love that look. I love that style. I love Tim Burton's take on on that. And I always, always wanted to do that costume. Previous to that, when I was eleven, nineteen seventy-seven, uh, December nineteen seventy-seven, he came over from America. He'd seen Star Wars in Ca he was living in California at that point. He'd seen Star Wars in California in the summer. He raved about it, was telling us all about it as kids. Uh, and again, as I said, then it was sort of six months later. It came out in December. And he bought myself and my brother two tickets to go and see it at the Dominion Theatre the, the day after or two days after it came out. Um, and he decided that he had to then buy my dad a ticket so someone could take us. And then he bought my dad and mum a ticket. And it went on. And in the end, I think it was like 20 odd members of my family went to see Star Wars. It's, it's the first film that really just blew me away. I, I was, I, I like to think I was the perfect age to watch it. Uh, and when the Star Destroyer, you know, you've got the Tanty Four flies past and that's pretty stunning and then the star destroyer just creeps onto the screen and just keeps going and going and going and going and going and it's just phenomenal it was breathtaking literally breathtaking at the time never ever seen anything like it and from that moment to the end of the movie i was just i was in that film i was part of it it was part of me i was not sitting in the cinema i absolutely just completely got involved in it in and I just, it, it was amazing. Yes. Yeah. I mean, all I really wanted was a Stormtrooper helmet. And I knew you could get them in America, but you couldn't get them here. And I couldn't convince my cousin to bring one over. Um, probably because he thought they were too expensive. Uh, but yeah, I had the trading cards. I actually remember um, the end of the summer holiday, which would have been 78, really being... Oh, unhappy that I was going back to school uh, at the end of the summer holiday. But actually, it was a really good day because I got the last two cards I needed for a set. You know, the original blue um, Star Wars trading cards. They're blue, red. Red was a second lot, and, and later there was yellow, I think. I don't remember yellow at the time, or if I do, I, I, but I used to have the full set of blue and I used to have the full set of red, and I've still got full sets, but not the... Not the sets that I had then. I don't know whatever happened to those. That's somewhere along the line. They probably got binned, although they would have been probably quite battered. And, you know, I used to look at them a lot. I had the original program that I'd got at the Dominion when I went there, which I, I still have somewhere, uh, which is fairly battered. And I did manage to acquire a pristine copy of the same thing, but I've kept the original just because it was the one that I had when I was a kid. Yeah, I had lots of the toys. Um, Nobody even considered leaving them in their packets and boxes back in those days. They were like, you know, but you, you ripped the packet out as soon as you got out of the store and it went into the bin or probably on the floor because you were just focused on, you know, the toy and the lightsaber that slid out of the arm. And... <sighs> there are always plans for future costumes. Um, I've always wanted to do a bike scout costume. And I've come close to doing it a couple of times. It's time is a big problem with me. I mean, I'm, I'm currently, with the help of Rowan, one of our members of my events team, I've been putting together an, uh, a new Stormtrooper because I, I troop quite a lot. So I, this would be my one, two, three, fourth set of armor. Um, because as I said, I've been doing, you know, I've been in the club 
15, 16 years now. So if you wear it a lot, it will wear out. There are there are costumes I would like to do. Um, I have no hard and fast plans right at this minute. I'd also like to do a First Order Trooper from The Force Awakens, only because I was a First Order Trooper in The Force Awakens. So I kind of would like to have that costume. I've got a Boba Fett costume that's all but ready to get cleared, that would have been cleared pre-COVID. Uh, but because of COVID, it's kind of put away and I just haven't had a chance to get it out and do the little finishing touches to make that clearable. I've also, yeah, see, you're really pushing the buttons now because the other thing I've got and want to get doing, I've got kind of half of a Cyberman costume from these uh, 70s that I would like to finish putting together. Uh, it, that is an iconic costume, I think, and I would like to do that. I like to be, you know, an eye for detail. I like to get things right or as right as possible. And it is the little details, in in my opinion, and it's to each their own, it is the little details that make the difference. But you still got to have a bit of fun. You can do both. I do the 1989 Keaton Batman, which is quite a serious, you know, dark kind of brooding character. But if you do it right, you can still have fun. Now, the, the funniest was, and we talk about this on the induction, so if you need to know what the funniest trip that I ever did was, you need to join the UK Garrison, get a costume clear, do the induction, and Steve, who does the induction, talks about the funniest trip that I was ever at, which was to do with the bag search, and what, what a stormtrooper inadvertently pulled out of somebody's bag, handbag. Um, yeah, that was very funny. You know, I've done a lot of troops all over the world, you know, I've trips in Europe, I've trips in Spain, Belgium, Germany, uh, Monaco, the US. You know, I've trips in lots and lots of places. What it always is, is fun. Things are only starting, in my opinion, to get back to normal. And I think this year, uh, 2024, I think things will head that way. A lot of the people who are joining now, have that enthusiasm that I, and I really recognize that it's, it's the same enthusiasm that I had and, and I think still have to be honest when I joined back in 2008. We just run troopers through the do's don'ts, the what to look out for, over at, which we now do via a Zoom call, which is, is quite cool. Uh, and then we get troopers to come out and crew for us first, which is to look after the other troopers, the costumers, before they then get out and costume in the afternoon so that they can experience every part of costuming and understand things before. We don't just want to throw somebody in the deep then, you know, there's your costume, jump out there, you know, do it. Uh, if, if people get to see everything, you know, it's hopefully it's a little safer. And what I've noticed in the last six months or so, I tend, if I can, and I think it's part of my job as uh, garrison CO to be on those calls and the enthusiasm and the, the, they, they just, you know, it's just great watching the garrison grow and I get to see it up close and personal because I see every zoom call that we have, there are these photographs in front of me on a screen and I know it's only a screen, but I'm talking to people who are up in the Northeast or wherever, all over the country. And I'm watching the garrison, you know, actually grow month by month. You, you know, I've kind of, in a bizarre way, uh, feed off of their enthusiasm because their excitement to get back out and true. Uh, I, I posted up on the forum. At that point, there were probably 50 or 60 regular people that posted and attended stuff. It was, you know, I think that, as I say, I was the 501st member to actually join. And, you know, generally the membership number compared to the people that are active, it's, you know, it's 10%, 20%, whatever it is, I don't know. But there were about 50, 60 maybe active members. And I posted some stuff on the forum because I was still pretty, I had my Batman costume I'd made and done and I've managed to get that cleared fairly soon. But I was building my Stormtrooper costume. And within minutes of posting something up, I had various people, Steve Barkley, Elaine, a um, guy called Chris Charrington who was around at that time, dropping me PMs saying, well, look, we'll help you out. And Elaine invited me to her house where she lived with Steve and the kids. And I think Chris came over, uh, a guy called Trevor, who was around at the time, uh, and a couple of other people. And I'm in this, I'm in somebody's house. They, they don't know me, they've never met me before in their life. 
Uh, I'm in their living room and they're all like going out of their way to help me build a costume. Uh, but it's like they were helping me selflessly. You know, they weren't getting anything. I wasn't paying them. You know, if, if I needed uh, some, I don't know, glue or Velcro or whatever it was, nobody said, oh, you need to go and buy that and bring it back next week. They went, oh, I've got some of that. Oh, yes, fine. We'll, we'll just use that. We'll just... And that's what this club is about. And that's what I love about this club because everybody does get things. When, when, when push comes to shove, doesn't matter. People are always there for each other. I will kind of do it as long as people want me to do it. I, I, it's just, I, it is amazing. I, 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 I'm sitting here trying to find words to just say, and it's like a full-time job. It really is like a full-time job. I'm luckily in my life, I'm quite freelance in, in my actual work, but I spend probably more hours on the garrison than I do on real work because it's that kind of place, you know, it, it it, it demands that of you and that's fine you, you know you accept it unfortunately we lose we have a high turnover of staff but we have a regular turnover of staff because you know people have kids or they you know this that or the other or their jobs you know people can't always commit to the time that you need but people are even if no matter how little or how much you you give it's it's all helping towards something that is just positive and it's nice to be involved in something that is really just good. Too many people talk themselves out of doing things in life. Oh, I haven't got time. Oh, I haven't got the money. Oh, I haven't got this. I haven't got that. Just do it. It, it, it. The garrison is is just, I always describe it as the most fun you'll have with somebody else's clothes on, generally. It, it, it's a good bunch of people from literally all walks of life, rich, poor, I, you know, every job you can possibly think of, literally. I, I mean, you know, it's better than a golf club. You know, if, if you need advice, uh, you can post something on the board and someone will know because they work in that area. It's just such a diverse mishmash of people that just all have this love of costuming, Star Wars, movies, whatever. And if that's you, then you found your people. That's what we are. That's what we all are. You'll never know that unless you make that leap. Ignore, you know, there, there are some naysayers. You know, if you're successful at anything, you know, people will have a reason why they they don't like you or this, that and the other. I, I, I think I can share this story. So I'm going to tell the story anyway. So sorry, Chris. Chris is my second in command for want of a better phrase and Chris and I have become very tight good friends I mean we've been friends for a long time anyway but obviously working together now really good friends Chris works in a job where he works shifts but you know what even obviously if his boss is watching whenever he's at work he has nothing to do with the garrison anyway moving on Chris and I talk to each other a lot. He has the same passion that I have for the garrison. He actually uh, is heavily involved in a lot of the US stuff in, and with costume. Uh, he's the LMBO over on the 501st uh, main US site. I, I, you know, very passionate guy. When Chris first got into costuming, his big love was Alien. And he had a, a Colonial Marine costume he joined a group, basically a group of colonial marines and aliens. You know, they were brilliant, still are, still around. And he had heard about this club called the UK Garrison. And he'd heard about this big bad guy who ran it and, you know, how they were this, that and the other. And of course, like many people, if people tell you something and if they tell you enough, they'll believe it. And Chris started to bump into, me and him started to bump into each other at events. We invited them to join us at, uh, various events and Chris and I just got to know each other he didn't know who I was I didn't know who he was we just became friends you know similar interest chat and whatever and then he found out that I was the guy that he wasn't supposed to like technically and this club that he wasn't supposed to like wasn't really what he'd been told you know cut to the chase here we are some years later and 
oh, he's, this guy is, you know, he's like a stick of rock. You cut him in half. You've got UK Garrison written through the middle of him. And he's, you know, he's so passionate about what we do and so supportive. So, yeah, my advice to new people, don't listen to any of the rubbish you've heard. Listen to all the good stuff. Come and join. Experience it for yourself. It's not for everyone. I, I accept that. So getting back to your initial question, if you have that dream that you want to be Deadpool, a Dalek, a Cyberman, Stormtrooper, Darth Vader, whatever it is, join and we will try to help that dream become a reality. You know, we have reasonably high standards. We try to go as screen accurate as possible. And that's because just, it's, it's kind of like if you're going to do something, do it the best you possibly can. And we will help you do that where we can. And and it's it's not difficult to do. It, it, interestingly enough, quite often, to turn a costume from one level to another level often doesn't take an awful lot. Uh, you know, there are small little tweaks that can turn something from being really, really good to being uber accurate and super accurate. And that's not everybody's cup of tea either. And it's not that being uber accurate is better than anybody else. You know, we all go out and we all have the same amount of fun regardless. That's just what we go for. That's just, that's just kind of, that goes all the way back to our roots with, with Graham, whose goal was to create super, super screen accurate stormtroopers and, 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 you know, Star Wars characters that then rolled into movie characters and, and so on and so forth. Uh, and we, that has just evolved and become an intrinsic part of this club. For us, slightly more so than the 501st, although I would say many, many 501st uh, clubs around the world are kind of coming to where we are at with that. Some probably already have been and, and always were, but that never used to be the case. We used to be part of a, a smaller group of people that were kind of as obsessed with the details. With the advent of Blu-rays and the advent of, you know, with computers and stuff, finding information and researching stuff has become easier and you can get things super, super accurate. I, you know, Stormtroopers, height of Stormtroopers. I was a Stormtrooper in The Force Awakens. I'm five foot. <clears throat> the height of a Stormtrooper, that's all relative. Darth Vader, there are some costumes I think you need a physical size or prowess for. You know, Michael Keaton was not a tall or a big guy. My Batman costume, which is pretty screen accurate, fits me quite well because I'm not a tall or big guy. You can wear that costume with confidence and create a presence. And you know what? Kids, they're not really bothered about any of that nonsense. To them, Batman came and said hi. To them, Batman had their picture with them. I wouldn't worry yourself too much with reasons not to do something. I can only talk about the ones that I didn't like as much. I remember when the prequels came out, I was so excited. The first Star Wars film for for an age, and we'd waited and waited and waited, and I, and I managed to get a press screening to get into a press screening and see it. You know, I kind of came out and I found my brother, and I remember my brother saying, "What's the story with you? You sound like somebody died." And I was like, "I think they just did," and and it just I was disappointed because it wasn't what I saw when I was eleven, I and mean, it was different. Yet kids who were eleven then went to see that, and they were blown away. So I wouldn't delete any of them or anything because that would be selfish because that would just be imposing my wishes on the 11 year old that watched The Phantom Menace.